election that everybody is on their way to hell, but God in his infinite mercy and grace chooses to pull some people out of that damnation and give them eternal life. Here's a really good, uh, two really good verses on that. Uh, notice all the times in these verses that God talks, it shows God's sovereignty and his power over man and his ability to change the way man is. It's First Chronicles 29, 18 and 19. And it's uh, David praying, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. Now the context is that he's wanting them to continue. They're getting ready to build the temple of Solomon. And so he's asking them to want to continue doing it and joyfully giving and things like that to produce this, the temple. So he says, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people and prepare their heart unto thee. There's two right there at least. One is that to keep that idea in their minds and their hearts, and the second part is prepare their heart unto thee. That's God influencing your heart. Second verse, which is verse 19, and give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace for the which I have made provision. So now he's even asking him to change Solomon's heart. Because Solomon would be born in a wicked, man, you know, a wicked person, and he's asking him, and he says, "And give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart." So God has the ability to do that. He wouldn't ask him if he doesn't have the ability. So that is, in a nutshell, Calvinism, or just a fancy way of saying it's what the Bible teaches. Hello. If you're watching this video, it could be that you found it on your own or it could be that someone sent to you because they care enough that they want you to hear about the gospel. The gospel is pretty simple. Some verses that can be used for the gospel are like Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5.8 says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you can think, well, you know, most of the religions teach that if you're good enough, you'll go to heaven. It's not what the Bible teaches. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for instance, says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 3, 19 to 20 goes on to say, Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of, of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So, what's the answer? Christ. John 3.16, you've probably heard it. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 5, 10, 9 to 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's a pretty simple way of explaining the gospel. So if you want, you can pray and, you know, if God's leading you to pray, and repent and accept Christ as the Savior, then you can be saved.